On this week's episode of Pay Dirt, we're going to learn all about feral hogs and how they're devastating America. The small traps are going to be a lot more versatile than the big traps. They're a definite real problem, and today on Pay Dirt, we're going to learn all about trapping them and so you can maintain the population on your place. All right, we're here with a real tree land pro, Barrett Van Cleve. Barrett, thank you for helping us out. Barrett and his family have a place here in the South. They have a lot of land and they have a timber operation. You know, the hogs in the South, you know, not only are they affecting the wildlife, but you know, when we plant baby pine trees and oak trees and maintain roads throughout our places, you know, the hogs are, are definitely messing them up. So Barrett does a method of, of, of catching hogs in a little bit smaller traps and, and you know, not everybody can spend four or five. Some of these traps cost $10,000, the big corral traps, but you're having a lot of success with the traditional trap. Absolutely. I've never had great cell phone service down here, so you know I've been using these smaller traps for years. Um, you're not going to catch the numbers that you catch in the corral trap, mm -hmm. but you are going to catch you know a pig almost every day if, if the way I set it up like this. And I'm this is the summertime; we're feeding protein right now, getting ready for deer season. So the pigs are already going to be coming by anyways. So I just move the trap somewhere close to the protein feeder, and uh, you know I'll catch you know. Not the big sounder, but I'll catch the smaller groups mm -hmm. of pigs coming through there. I've caught up to six in this trap. That's um, pretty good. But usually, you know, it's going to be one to two, and I'll catch some big pigs too. You'd be surprised at how good of a pig can actually go through that five and a half foot gate. But uh, I've had a lot of success with it. Um, I may get one of the corrals one day, but this is a great way. You know, you can get five of these for the price, so you can get one corral. Right. And you move them around a lot yeah, easier. Absolutely. They're easy, easy to move up. You can throw them in the back of a pickup truck, weight it down with your feed, and, you know, strike out and move it in a matter of 10 minutes for one person. So, Barry, if you had to give me a recommendation, you know, let's say a guy's got 100 acres. Does he need one trap, five traps? What do you think? You know, we're sitting on about 650 acres right here, and I've only got two traps. So, you know, one, one goes a long ways. You can catch multiple pigs. You may need to move it around a little bit. Uh, from time to time, but I generally will keep that trap in the same spot until the pigs just stop coming around it. You know, I may have three in the trap and two outside the trap, so I'll, I'll reset it in that same area and then move it around. So you can really do a lot of damage with just one or two traps. Well, Barrett, you know, uh, it's the off season right now, and uh, you know, you're catching hogs in the off season, I, I guess, so you're not having to do this during deer season, that's right? Absolutely. You know, they are, the, the deer and the pigs are in direct competition with one another. They sleep in the same place, they eat the same things. You know, you're just trying to get, you're not going to get rid of all of them. It, it's impossible. But you're trying to get it into a manageable number to where you don't have a group of 40 running through an area where you've got a good deer. And you hear that 40 hogs. Yeah, 40 hogs coming in a food plot or around a feeder or something like that can definitely, definitely mess you up. We're going to kick it over to Jason Heathco right now. He's going to talk a little about trail cameras on property. We're going to go check out a trap bear it's got and he's going to give us some tips. So you've had your property for years, you got to move, or it's just time for, for an upgrade of farms. What's the best thing, in my opinion, um, you can do to solidify your tract as a hunting tract to potential buyers? Um, in my opinion, nothing's better than trail camera pictures. Um, they're super easy nowadays. My personal favorite is the Stealth Cam. They send me pictures right to my phone, which is going to enable me as a listing agent to uh, on the daily or weekly, whenever those new deer show up or big deer, I can throw them on the listing on RealtreeUC.com and the buyers are going to see what they can expect to be hunting immediately whenever they purchase the property. So me as a deer hunter, um, in my mind, if I'm looking at a 50 acre track and I'm thinking about buying it solely for hunting, really it's a risk. Um, but with these trail cameras, what that's going to do is drive home that this is the track um, that I'm looking for, you know. But when you show me a trail cam picture of an 8 point, a 10 point, a 12 point with a kicker and a drop time, I'm sold. I'm ready to make an offer. 
Um, and that's what we're experiencing with a lot of our buyers, you know. And whenever I can show a buyer trail camera pictures, um, and pictures in general of the wildlife that's on the property and what they can expect to be hunting, if they close on a Friday, Saturday morning, they can be in a tree stand enjoying their new investment. Um, that just drives home that that is the track for them. Trail cameras are an unbelievable tool to have in your back pocket when you're getting ready to sell your property, for sure. Barrett, we're here with one of his traps, and uh, you know Barrett does a little different method than our buddy Kenyon, who we're gonna go to later in the episode. Kenyon has the big corral traps. Uh, Barrett, what do you like about the smaller traps? Not that the big traps don't work great, but what do you like about the smaller traps? The small traps are gonna be a lot more versatile than the big traps. Uh, you know, you got pigs showing up somewhere that you hadn't seen them before. You can get it in there with one man real easily. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know you're not going to catch the sounder like you're going to catch in the corral traps but you know a lot of times I'll catch a whole group of, of you know a small group of boars or something it may take five or six days but if you could if you're catching them consecutive days you know it, it's a little bit more work but it, it, I think it's a little more fun as well instead of knocking them all out in one swing so you're having fun catching Absolutely, hogs too yeah you know it's it's work and it's it's not ideal when it's hot like this but this is a great day to set these traps and uh, I know, I know, me and you've eaten and cooked some hogs before. They're great to eat, especially when I, you were telling me earlier. You know, you're giving them corn for free for a couple of days. Explain that. To right. You. you know, so when I set this trap up for the first time, I've, I've already had my stealth cam out, so I know how many pigs are in the area. I'll zip tie this open or put a cable or a big a big cord on it, and I let them eat free for three or four days. Okay. I want them to go in there. I want them to feel calm and relaxed. That way, the day I come down here and set it, and it's go time. I'm gonna catch a pig instantly that night. I mean, it's a, it, it, it's a foolproof system. Awesome. Show me how this thing works. It's got a good spring on it. Yeah, and when it pins itself right here, they can push against this all they want to. They're not getting out of there. Well, it sounds like Barrett has had some success and failures and learned a lot. You know, he's using, uh, he's using the smaller traps moving it to the hogs. We're gonna go with our buddy Kenyon in a little while and he's gonna show us the big traps that they kind of put in place and then move the gate around and catch, you know, Barrett reference sounders. That's a group of young hogs. So uh, Barrett's having success, Kenyon's having success. Neither one of them, I guess, are right or wrong. It's just, hey, what works for you in your area? Right, you know, this is a, a more economical version. This is a homemade trap. This is a homemade trap, you know, and you can have five or six of these for the price of one of those. Right. Now you're not gonna you're not gonna catch as many as that trap, but this is a successful method if you don't have the means or cell phone service to have one of those corral traps. This week on Pay Dirt, our featured property comes from Southern Virginia in Mecklenburg County. This 43 acres is a true hunter's paradise. The property features an off-grid cabin. It has a full bath, full bedroom, a sleeping loft, and a great room. Believe me, this cabin, it truly has all the amenities of home. The property features a great road system, beautiful hardwood timber, food plots, deer stands, and is located on Allen's Creek. Allen's Creek not only gives you access to water year-round for the wildlife, but it also offers fishing year-round. The property, it is loaded with deer and turkeys, and even has the occasional bear. So if you're looking for a great place for you, your family, and friends to go stay, hunt, and relax on the weekends, you need to check out this 43 acres in Southern Virginia. If you like this property or properties like this anywhere in the country, check out RealtreeUC.com today. Well, Dwayne, Kenya, thank y'all for having us out. Yep. Look. We with some real hog trappers now. Barrett showed us this morning, you know, how to catch them in, in, his, in his smaller traps, and he's doing real good. But these men, they tell me they know what's going on. Y'all caught, what, almost 70 this year? We caught uh, 69 in the last four months. And just the other day, how many did y'all catch in one bunch? We caught 13 right here in the drift, which is, the drift is a young group of hogs. I got it. That the sow's done moved away from the up from them and left them alone, and that's when they all kind of bunched up. I got so you. we caught 13 nice eating size, 20 to 30 pounds. Dwayne is the uh, president of the hunting club here. They've got 11,000 acres, right. and y'all have different corral sets. We have three of these. Right. We have three of these corral sets, and what we do, uh, we'll we'll have uh, the cell cameras, and then we move the uh, gate wherever it needs to be. So y'all move this gate, and tell me how this gate works. Well, the gate uh, is, is wired to these t posts and we have, uh, we have it staked down on each corner. Right. And uh, what it does, uh, 
hogs come in, when, they, when, the, when all the hogs come in, right. not just part of them, when they all decide to go in the trap, we yeah. call up the number and drop the gate. We like catching the whole sound. So the gate is a cellular control, uh, cellular control, so once we see all the hogs inside of the trap, we can simply call it, boom, it drops, and you caught all the hogs. And catch the whole bunch. Catch the, catch whole, the bunch. whole bunch. Well, this morning, you know, we heard from Barrett, and he was telling us he was having a lot of success catching a couple of hogs at a time. And some people we were saying economically, you know, maybe somebody can't afford a gate or something like that. There's nothing wrong with catching a couple, but if you want to catch the whole bunch and maintain the hog population like we've been learning about all day, the big traps is the way to go. Men, thank y'all for having us out. I ain't going to make y'all sit in the rain anymore. Eat hogs, baby. Eat oh, yeah. Hogs. And hey, the man says it's the best thing to eat in the woods. Best thing, guys. 20, 30 pounds, hog run around on your property. It don't get no better than that. Put them in the freezer, put them in the ice chest, and then put them in the skillet. It don't get no better. Hey, thank y'all for watching, Pater. We're going to get dry.